Yo Nuguam Kerry Newman Heman Bachon Tlai Hyalth Kingume. Uh, I come from the Kokwekam, Gixam, and Wobalabai clans of the Kokwakiwak Nation, which is on the northern end of Vancouver Island, as well as from Chiam of the Stalo Nation, which is along the upper Fraser Valley. And uh, I'm a carver. Uh, we're here at my, my studio, um, looking at a few of the projects that I do uh, or that I'm working on currently. Uh, so, welcome. Yeah, so I, I learned to carve from my father, um, Victor. And when I was a little boy, I cut my thumb uh, trying to carve a wooden car uh, made out of scraps of wood that were on the floor of his workshop. And I was hooked. Now I have a child who's older than I was at the time, um, and I'm still as interested today in, in carving as I was back then. I don't carve cars anymore. Um, generally I carve poles, panels, um, paddles. And I guess I think I'd say that I'm motivated by, part, partly by the tradition, partly by that, like the cultural resurgence that comes with with really understanding um, an art form. The commitment that I made a couple of years ago not to cut down any more old growth trees. So what we're looking at here, these are old growth, but these are salvage pieces. They were salvaged from logs that escaped from booms or pulled out of cut blocks because, and they were left behind because they weren't big enough or they were too difficult to access, that sort of thing. So that's one of the, the things that I've been doing and sort of investigating new ways um, is another way. And for that, I've been working with a team at Camosun Innovate to develop this big apparatus that, that we were looking at this morning and getting set up to cut so that we're still connected to that sort of the sacredness of the tree of life, of cedar. I used more power tools early on. So, um, for instance, on the one over here, uh, which is in very early stages, I'll make lots of chainsaw cuts and then use adzes, which is a traditional tool to, to knock off blocks of wood um, and to kind of, uh, to, to slowly rough the piece in. Uh, I don't, I don't see the technology as being um, sort of sacred. And so I, I do use them. And then the, the very last part is this one, which is, which is almost complete. And the, the tools kind of start out big, like so I have knives that have two handles and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller as we go along and so we end up having um, yeah big chainsaws and power tools to start on one like that definitely when it comes to public art um, or art that's going to be in public places. I try whenever possible to make sure that I'm, I'm reflecting on and building directly into the, to the design. We have a word in Kwakwala uh, a witnikula, and it means to live in good relationship with the land, air, water, 
spirit worlds and everything in them. So I think about that a lot. What it means to be in good relationship with, with trees, what it means to be in good relationship with each other, uh, what it means to be in good relationship with technology. I sort of embed that in the, in the process, but also in um, what I'm depicting. For me, the, the deeper meaning of, of the work does come from being able to, to do something that makes people just think a little bit differently, just to maybe tickle the back of their consciousness. Um, just to imagine things in a different way. Like, I made some um, public work called the Earth Drums. Just by making these great big boxes that you can pound on, you can see how people interact with them and how maybe sometimes when they're playing them, they recognize that they're making music for the land. Um, and just the act of making music for the, the earth underneath our feet is a tiny little shift in consciousness. And so it's that kind of little readjustment of a traditional art form of, of a Bentwood box, but made really big and turned into a drum. I want to leave behind a planet that's healthy for my daughter and for the generations to come.